But but even even greater than that, that when the when the sheep are are at in, at risk of an enemy, of, of an aggressor like a, like a, like the lion or the bear. You remember when David was getting ready to fight the lion? And he began to say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. You know, he said, he said, just like, just like when, when I was, when, I, when a lion attacked my sheep, you know, I killed that lion. When, when a bear attacked the sheep, I killed that bear. He understood the job of a shepherd was to protect the sheep. And so David realized at this particular point, as he is facing off with Goliath, he is the sheep, okay, and he has a shepherd. And this is what we see here, even in Scripture, he's talking about the Lord is my shepherd. He realized that that relationship. It, it wasn't a relationship with a book. David didn't have a Bible. <laughs> you know, there wasn't nothing like that. Wasn't, that stuff wasn't going on back then. But David realized the relationship that he had. And see, that's what we've lost. You know, as wonderful as this historical document is, and these stories, and these allegories, and all these, you know, that, that give us an idea of life back then, and, and the, the lives of the people, and even Jesus back then, the detriment that it does is it's taken our focus off of the shepherd off that real knowing, off that relationship that we can walk in in real power, that, that we can walk up to a, a, a seasoned uh, warrior giant and, 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 and proclaim that, that the shepherd is going to take care of me because I know the shepherd that well. It's not reading it well, the Lord's going to take care of me, so let me go ahead and fight this, this giant. No, he knew. How did he know? Because that word that resided within him, even then, he knew. The word has always been there. So, so when Jesus is even saying the Father's going to sit in my that word was always there. <laughs> the word became flesh and dwelt among us, but that word was there and the word is there. But the word has to be sought out. It has to be looked for. It has to be embraced. It has to be nurtured. And that nurturing is simply the growing in relationship so that when, you, when you're facing giants, see that giant in David's life, when he was facing Goliath, that was like, that was symbolizing the downs. It could be. You know, because we have his ups and we have the downs. And, and you know, when David came out there, the story, man, I don't need to be jumping back and forth, but the story was that, that they were the children of Israel were, were in battle against the Philistines. And, and every morning in the valley, Goliath would go down to this valley and he'd challenge any one of the soldiers, any one of the Israelite soldiers to come down and fight him. And then whoever won, the, the other side would be their servants, their slaves, okay? But, but he was a scary cat. I mean, he was giant, you know? And he was trained, a seasoned warrior all of his life. And he had even his, his, his spears were like nine, ten feet tall and all. Nobody would go down there. David came. The reason David was there, his daddy sent him to the battlefield to check on his brothers. Here, bring this cheese, bring this bread, give it to the King Saul down there. But when you're down there, check and make sure your brothers are all right and give me the word, you know. So David was fine. David had been watching those sheep. Daddy sent him out there. He's running down to check out the army. He's a young man. Check out what's going on in the battlefield. That's an up for a kid. But then he gets there and this giant hears this giant screaming and he goes down there and but if things push comes to shove, he's down there getting ready to face off with this giant. So in a lot of our lives, facing that giant could be the down, but he wasn't down. He was even more up when he was facing the situation because of that word, that relationship, that knowledge that he had with God. He was stronger. So, so when the thing that was actually bringing all the Israel army down into the valley... But David, it brought him even higher than he was and gave him a strength. Because that's when that kicked in. That's when that relationship kicks in. See, he, walked, he didn't even, he made, he knew how strong he was when it came to protecting his sheep. But, but something within him quickened. That word of God, that word of God within him quickened, man, when he recognized it was somebody challenging God. Something, what do you think brought David down there? David? No, it was that which was within David, moved him, motivated him. He went down there and took care of business. And that's what I'm saying. This, this Bible right here, as wonderful as it is, and the wonderful stories and all that we tell our children that I raise telling my kids on, the reality of this in too many lives has taken the place of the word that resides within us. And this is the focus. And this is why we get down so often. So realize that. So, so the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Okay, get that. So a lot of times the detriment, the problem, even in ministry, and in and, and ministry of the Bible, for me, you know, I was Sun Tzu, the art of war. You know, I've been studying the art of war for like 30 or 40 years. I don't know how many times I've read it or even listened to the audio book, probably over 100 times, I'm sure. It's like a part of my life. 
so that, so that I see somebody struggling. And, and I say, hey, you know, there are precepts, concepts out of the art of war that you could use. And I try to share them with them. And immediately they're like, yes, that'll work. But guess what? You walk back right back into that situation and they're just, they're not utilizing that. They're just back in that mess they were in. Why? Because it's not really a part of them. You're going to hear it and it's going to sound good, but if it's not a part of you, it's not going to work. Okay? And, and so it's the same thing with scripture. That's the problem with the churches today. That's the problem. And it's not the problem with the church. It's the problem with the idea that the people really are getting all of their insight, all of their, their motivation simply on Sunday mornings when they go to church. This is really not a part of them. So as soon as they get back out into the real world and something hits them, all those words of wisdom that they, that they aim into in church are fleeting. They're gone. Okay? We, as individuals, have to be walk in that relationship. We have to exercise that relationship. We have to talk to the Father every day. We have to meditate. We have to consider. We have to read. We have to strengthen that which is within us. We have to give that which is within us. You know, that, that food, that food, not to keep it alive, but that food that, that brings to our remembrance, that brings to our mind, to our psyche, that keeps us up on these things and well, even in the midst of terrible situations, okay? At number two, verse two, he maketh, us, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me back beside the still waters. How peaceful, how calm, how calm. To, to me, that's a, that's a, that's a, sort of like a motivation. He leads us beside the still waters. He, 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 he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He's taking me to a place where just he and I can be. Into that place of quietness, a place where we could begin to listen and hear that still, small voice. That's where he leads me. Even, why do you think he leads? I mean, you know, we've read this, and many of us have memorized this since we were kids, but why do you think he leads David into a place of green pastures and a place where still walkers? So there'll be a quiet place where he can hear that still, small voice where they can come in and he can find strength. He restoreth my soul. Come on, how many of us don't need that? He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. See, see, this is, this is where we miss it. Because if, even in our responses to negativities, to, to, to things that we're facing, we don't respond in a righteous manner because, because we're not being led there. See, all this recognizing, number one, that he's your shepherd, okay? Recognizing, number two, that he makes you lay down. He's bringing you to a place of meditation, a place of relationship, a place of communion. And then he restores my soul to me. It's, it's not coincident that this is the order that these are placed in. Because we don't understand. First, you've got to know who God is. Then, then you've got to realize you've got to go to the place where you can begin to listen to him and commune with him in a quiet place. And verse three, your soul will be restored. And you will become more righteous even in your responses to situations. And number four, is, and this is where we're going to stop, simply. This is what I wanted to focus on. But yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy rod and thy staff. The, those are shepherd's tools to taking care of the sheep. Okay? So that's from verse 1, recognizing who the shepherd is. So, so the only way that, that you'll fear no evil, because thou art with me, is that you know that thou art with me. You know that God is with you. You have no fear. Because he's the shepherd and you're the sheep. And what I want to kind of close with is, is you either walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So, so what's that? <laughs> well, death, we know what that is. That could be awful scary. But the shadow, what's that? The shadow is, is an illusion. The shadow is, it opens you to imaginations on whatever kind of negativity, whatever kind of stuff can, can come about you, all the fears and, and things that aren't really real that you're just thinking and considering. Though that's the shadow of death. It's not real. And there's, so there's nothing to fear. And, and even when we're looking at situations, death, or whatever it is that you're facing right now, the, the actual result is the shadow, is the imagination, is the thing that has you worried, has you freaking out. David, when he was facing off with Goliath, Goliath was, was death. His imagination then was the shadow of death. So where did, where did that spirit of God, where did God take David's imagination? See, the imagination of the men of Israel was, was, you know, the shadow, their shadow of death was they couldn't beat this man. They'd just be die. They're going to die and it's all over. But the shadow that David saw <laughs> was not the shadow those men saw. And David gained strength, gained encouragement in the face of, of death. And that's what a relationship with God will do for you recognizing that word within you 
is where your strength comes from. 